what, what occurred in Ghana with the fix the country hustle with the police for a month without being without securing the police consent for a demonstration and when you stepped in you had the same response you didn't give up and you went in further and one day we just saw text Facebook messages that the police have agreed on the demonstration it gave a sense to some civil society people that Ghana is actually under the hijack of political parties, two political parties, you, <laughs> the NDC, and the MPP. Some people were even teasing the fix the country people, but you don't have good lawyers. George Aparado is a good lawyer, and he went in with some George, another good lawyer. You don't have good lawyers, so the police, you couldn't put the law to the police. They went and they got the demonstration done. What happened? Is it, would you, if you were not in NDC and you were sitting back, would you be concerned about fairness? Paul, I was worried, just like any other Ghanaian, when Fix the Country were denied their rights to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. Because you see, Paul, I cannot take your life. Mm -hmm. You have a right to live. Mm -hmm. If I want to take your life, it is only a court of content jurisdiction that can grant that. Mm -hmm. That same right you have to live. It's the same right I have to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. It is my right. You can never take that away from me. When I first wrote to the police, that I wanted to embark on a demonstration. I quoted section one of Act 419 and told them that I needed to give them five days notice. I wrote my letter to them on the 30th of June and told them that between the 30th of June and then the 6th of July, are six clear days. So I have satisfied that requirement and I expect them to allow me to go on with my demonstration. That same day, the police wrote back to me. I addressed my letter to the IGP mm -hmm. and then I copied the original command. I did not receive a letter immediately from the IGP. I received a letter from the regional command. And the regional command cited two laws. They cited EI 395 as the basis. They did not tell me that I could not proceed on my demonstration. So we need to understand that. What they said was that there was COVID, there was the Imposition mm -hmm. and Restrictions Act, that mm -hmm. is 1012. And that's, there is EI 395 still in force. And then they also cited Section 4 of the Act 491, that is the Public Order Act, and said that based on these two laws, the police could not come and provide security. Immediately I saw that letter, I loved at it, because I knew that 395 had expired a long time ago, mm -hmm. and that 157 had been introduced and passed, and had also expired. After 157, the government had not gone before Parliament with mm -hmm. a new EI. Yeah. So I knew that these laws were not in existence. I also knew that Section 4 of Act 491 refers to emergency powers given to the Interior Minister when Ghana is under curfew. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and as at 30th June, there was no curfew in any part of Ghana, not even in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So there was no curfew anywhere. So I wrote back to the police and called off their bluff. And I told them that, you know what? I am telling you that I will be in the streets demonstrating. And you know what to do. You don't, I don't need any permission from you. I have alerted you. You are mandated to do your job. And if by Friday I have not heard from you, I will be compelled to go to court, seek a mandamus from a rate, or issue a rate of mandamus, and compel you to come and do your job. Because you are paid to protect citizens. And apart from that, you have no other business. And if you don't want this demonstration to come on, then you know what to do. Go to court on notice. Invite yeah. me and let me come. And then let's argue before a judge. And let the judge listen to the two of us. When that happens, then you can stop me. But when I'm in the street demonstrating, you can't arrest me for anything because I've notified you. It is only when I refuse to give you notice, then you can charge me for not serving you the appropriate notice. Luckily for me, Friday morning. So there's a house in Edra. So I came back Thursday evening. Then Friday morning, I get a call from the IGP's office. that the IGP wanted to engage with myself and then my team. So I quickly called my general secretary and my national chairman. I said, I will. I just saw our people were like, oh, we shouldn't even go. They are going to serve us with an injunction. I said, if an injunction was served, I was going to disregard it because based on the, the said Dennis, Jay's ruling, <laughs> you cannot go to court ex party. That means you are still doing an illegal, you are, what you are doing was an illegality. So we Which went the Supreme there. Court has recently affirmed. Yeah, and the Supreme Court just affirmed it. Mm. So I, I was very convinced that any other thing they bring, ex-party motions. I'll disregard it. I'll not accept it. And if only George Parado will be in the streets on that day, I will prove to the states that you cannot hold somebody's rights against his wishes. I was going to demonstrate anyway, anyhow. Mm. And a one man can stage a demonstration. It doesn't mm. matter how many people. And I had committed members of the National Democratic Congress 
who were willing to come out in the streets and demonstrate with me. Luckily for us, when we met the IGP, there were apologies rendered. He told us that he's, he's withdrawn the letter from the regional command unconditionally because the letter was not even addressed to the regional command. But the truth was that it was embarrassing for the regional command to even quote laws that had expired. That, that's very embarrassing. Very, very embarrassing. And you see, it got international media attention. And for a young judge of Parado telling the whole Ghana police that you are quoting laws that have expired, it was an indictment on the police. So I believe that it was a safe-facing gimmick to allow us to demonstrate. But we didn't do anything extraordinary. We only stood our grounds and told them that did this you, is a did matter you, of rights. Did you, in that meeting, then draw the IGP's attention that, in, on the basis of this, you have been unfair to the fixed the country? No, the IGP himself said it, that he had engaged them. The fixed the country? Yes, people. and let me, let me sit here and let me commend the IGP. Very professional police officer. I had never encountered Mr. him Pumbo, before. No. I had never encountered him before. I had people lambasted are angry him. With him. I had lambasted are very him. Angry I with had him. lambasted him severally on several platforms. But when I encountered him, the professionalism he exhibited, I cannot I cannot lie about it. He showed real professionalism. That he had even engaged the fix the country people and that they've agreed on the dates that they could go on their demonstration. Oh, so their demonstration is going to happen. I hear so. Are you I, going to I participate? No, you're well. not allowed to participate. They don't want you to participate in their demonstration. You see, when I'm, I'm Ghanaian first and foremost, mm -hmm. before NDC. Yeah. And I told the conveners of Fix the Country that, you see, they are mistaken. Mm -hmm. If you want to do a successful demonstration in this country, yeah. and you think you can play out the two major political parties, mm -hmm. yes, you may call the demonstration, but you see the numbers. Mm. I would demonstrate with them if the day comes, because I am Ghanaian. And the issues that confront them, there are some of them, apart from their need for a new constitution, mm -hmm. every other issue that they are up against are similar issues the NDC is up against. Mm -hmm. So if that day comes and I'm available and nothing takes me out of Accra and it's being staged in Accra, I will join them because mm -hmm. I'm Ghanaian. And I believe that it is only by mounting constant pressure on the Ekufado government that we will get this country fixed. <laughs>